or something, it has to be, it has to be, I would actually say I was going with jazz and it just totally creates a whole, a whole mood for everything. Because it's jazz. sketch that I did at a meeting that we were having about a show we were trying to do and I just said uh, by the time we finished the meeting I had this sketch of all these different hair wraps on her so I just took the sketch and turned it into a painting and started throwing color all around and that's what I came up with <clears throat> and that's oil or acrylic? yeah that's just oil that's straight oil another piece that I was fond of because of the uh was this right here that came out really really good uh, it's basically the same technique, oil over top of pencil, uh, with color pencil. Oh my god. I like some other stuff that's unfinished. By you being an unknown artist, are you constantly, are you getting paid for what you want for these pictures? Janai, or? get down! No, I never, I mean, I set the price for, you know, for what I want. And, and actually did a tracing overlay in a computer graphics uh, program and then went in and laid these shapes down and colors like I was painting with a brush. That's Mike Tyson when he was still fighting. Yeah. Um, oh, one other piece I, I like. It's a whole lot of different techniques going on with this. Oh, wash, gouache, wash, wash. Uh, just straight brush work. It's a lot of things going on. Damn, yeah, shit. What's that? <laughs> yeah, let's get that joint. I mean, I don't see why we got any. It's my Janet piece. This piece is very symbolic. This piece represents. Uh, what you can do in one day. Actually, it took a whole day, literally from morning to evening. So I would say at least nine or ten. But I really like it. I think it's it's spontaneous. It's uh, it's it's bright, vibrant. It's my signature at the bottom. That's when I was younger. I used to always uh. I used to always draw like all kids do when they go. Except for I took, uh, it just, I just took to it a little bit more because it was something easy to do. It became easy to me. So I took to it a little bit more. Uh, I would like And uh, I just was really good at it. And I stuck with it. And uh, out of, when I was in junior high, I was like one of the kids that really could draw real well. So they came to me to do little things. There was maybe about three of us that were really good. And uh, when I got to high school, I auditioned to Duke Ellington, and I auditioned, I used to be a musician as well, and I did both of them equally uh, well. Take that out your mouth. Put that back. Put it back. Thank you. Put it back. And when I got to Duke, I auditioned, I thought I was going to be able to audition for both, and I couldn't. And the art audition was first, and the music audition was later on in the evening. So I started with, uh, I did the uh, audition for the art department, and then after I finished that, someone told me that I only could audition for one thing. And I'd already did the art audition, so I was stuck. Stuck in art, that's what thrust me into that field. And uh, I just stayed with it ever since. I went to Duke Ellington, and I went to Virginia Commonwealth. I would say the most impact in my life as an artist it always, it's always the structure, and Ellington gave us uh, the structure that I don't think many kids get. We just had everything down. By the time we got there, a lot of things that they were trying to teach, we already knew. We just needed to refine and figure out technique, and that's actually what 
uh, VCU actually did. They taught us uh, how to refine, polish, and give us and work on our technique. It's, it's a transition. I, I was all when I was in high school. One of our teachers, uh, Melchus Davis, Mr. Davis, he was a. I, I literally wanted to be that cat. He was the way the way he, his thought process, his ideas, his technique, and the way he painted. I wanted to be him. Um, he, he's incredible with a with a brush. And then when I got to college, uh, Alex Bostic, he kind of took over when when Mel left off. Uh, I really became fond of the way he did things and just his precision. I grew into jazz because of my dad. My dad used to work on the on the jazz station, and um, he he actually turned me on to jazz, and it's just relaxing, man. And I've been if, if I'm really serious about something, it has to be it has to be. I would actually say I was going with jazz, and it just totally creates a whole a whole mood for everything. Because it's jazz and art are one, man. People look at it two different things. That's one. Mm -hmm. Music, period. Music and art. Um, music generates art. If I just came in here and listened to nothing and tried to do something, I guarantee it would come out a lot better if I had some music to motivate me in general. So when would you say you were at your creative best? Late at night. I'm a late night dude. I do my best late at night. What Stuff you see in daily life? It would be a, sh a show, going to shows or seeing my friends, like exhibits, or music. If some neo soul or some jazz, anything. And what type of artist are you or how would you describe like your style? myself an uh, illustrator with a fine art quality to his work. Um, more fine art meaning very loose and uh, not com confined to anything. And the illustrator part is the more polished part. Starving artists, like what does that term mean to you when you hear that? Like starving artists, I... Yeah, but would you consider totally yourself a starving artist? I do. But from a totally different perspective, I mean, I feel like I, I graduated, I got married, I had kids, you know, I did the house thing and found a stability in that first. And instead of making those sacrifices, I think I'm doing it backwards. So I'm trying to figure out a way to incorporate the family thing with, with the uh, success of an artist. So the starving part wouldn't mean uh, financial. I think it's more so starving to be recognized, starving to be heard. So that's where the struggle is, trying to create that balance between family life and your career. If you want to be the best, like it's, it's, it's one thing to be good and to be comfortable where you are, be good and let's just say make a living at what you do. But if you want to take it further and you want to be the best, and uh, they, I mean like a Jordan, you got to make sacrifices and it's, it's nothing you put nothing above one and above one one meaning your art art being one nothing can come before that um so if you're going to be married or try to have a family or a relationship it's automatically going to be harder man we're asked to uh to be as godlike as possible and, and live this righteous life and the odds are already against us because as soon as you come out you're born into sin it's like you're born into these things oh, and then the rest of your life you're supposed to go work on changing it and work on how not to do what your body is normally trained and born in to do so it's, it's crazy man so you can kind of say like instead of somebody being born rich you're born in like being an unknown and then having to discover exactly or be discovered exactly by the rest of the world exactly that's very interesting joe <laughs> Like, what, is, not, what are you doing to pay the bills? Let me ask you that. Oh, I work a regular a, nine to five. A regular nine to five. I work in an investment firm, and uh, that's what I do to nine to five to pay the bills. But to me, art is not, it's not, a, way of, it's not a, a, a way to live. It's like a, when I wake up, this is not something that I do just for money. I wake up and I do it. I mean, it's just like part of me. To, now, for me to generate it into a way of, to uh, financially support my lifestyle, that would be another thing. That's what I'm trying to do, um, just to be happy. But this is not something that I wake up and just do just for money. I mean, this is, I wake up, I breathe it, I live it. I mean, it's just part of me. I couldn't wake up and not think about art or not work on a picture or not be motivated or energized to 
to want to go out and find uh, new material. It's just, it's just so, it's just a part of. It. Like, how many homes would you say you have artwork in? Uh, to be honest, man, I have no idea. Just tons. There's so many. My work, I'm mean, in so many homes, a lot of different places. I couldn't even really. I never really sat down and tried to okay. tried to count. And, I, people, man, when you when you, it's all about being true to yourself and doing what you do. People are either gonna love what you do or they're not. When I, if I'm creating anything, it's a part of me, and it's not directed for any one person. If I show it to you, you either love it or you don't. Um, that's just basic and just simple as that.